Hey everyone, welcome to our first lesson of the year. So my goal for you is that you would be watching this at home and that you would be taking notes. So everything that I have written on here, you write down, you can abbreviate and things like that, but my expectation is that you would come back tomorrow and I will check and if your notes are taken, you get the point. If they're not taken, you do not get the point. So we're gonna start off with 1.1 variables and expressions. So at the top, I would like you to write down your essential question, which for the day is what are variable expressions and why are they important? As I talk, I'm just gonna talk through these slides. So if I'm talking too fast or you need more time to write, then your job is to push pause. Um, my goal is to get the, the lesson, the video itself, 10 minutes or less and so it might take you longer to take those notes, but uh, you should be writing stuff down, pause as needed. So we're gonna start off with some vocab that is super important for us to know and just have ready to go for this year. The first one is a quantity, and that's anything that can be measured or counted. Some quantities remain constant, and some change or vary. Or vary. These are called variable quantities. So those quantities are the ones that we use variables for, x, y. Um, for example, I don't know how much gas I'm going to use to going to the cabin. That's a variable quantity. But I do know how many children I have, uh, biological children, and so that stays the same. Then we've got a variable. It's a symbol, usually a letter, that represents the value of of a variable quantity. Now that you are in eighth grade, it's almost always gonna be a variable. If you think, well, what else could it be? In elementary school, sometimes they had boxes that you filled in. That was a variable. They just didn't put the letter in to scare you. A numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that has only numbers and operation symbols. Then algebraic expression, that is a mathematical phrase that contains one or more variables. So we worked with those a bit last year. Pause if you need more time. Then we hop to this side, examples of variable expressions. Well, this one is 8y, 8y, different, several different ways that you can write it. What I want you to do is pause the video and quick figure out what does that mean, what's it asking you to do, and then come back and check. All right, so pause. All right, what's the meaning of this one? Basically, eight times y. You could say the product of eight and y, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it, but they just want you to multiply. So the operation is multiplication. Over here, we don't wanna write eight y as eight times with the x, y, because that might look like 8 times x times y. So don't use the x's any anymore. This one, let's see, this is 16 divided by, <laughs> and write out the words, I would just say, well, I know it's divided by because it's that sign, but um, just for the day, we're being a little more detailed. So that's division over here. This is the sum of 4 and S, 8 plus S, um, S more than 4. There's a whole bunch of ways that you can say that that will translate today. So 4 plus S, and that's adding. And this one, X less than 9. Less than, we'll talk about that, um, but less than y'all were pretty good at that one but be very careful with your less than so I'll just say 9 minus x but um, usually they'll use the less than so that's subtract all right check it hopefully you're doing good now let's go through again I want you to pause and just answer these questions quick you should be able to translate them yourself and then come back and check with me three more than twice a number. So I know I'm adding three and twice a number. Now question, because it's adding, is the order important? That's a little arrow. Could I have done three more than twice a number? 
Yes, you could have. But because of the less than and just trying to hold a pattern, if it says more than, I'm going to throw it to the end. What property says that you can switch? Commutative property says it doesn't matter what order you add in. This one, seven less than, you've got to do the less than after. Seven less than the quotient of eight and z. Then this one, the product of four, and because it says the sum of x and seven, the x and the seven have to be in parentheses. So this product of four and the sum of x. If it had just said the product of 4x plus 7, you could have changed that, but the sum of puts that in parentheses. How'd you do? Good. All right, a little bit of practice. So again, a lot of these videos might be tr pause, try it, and then come back and check with me. So you pause, do them, and then come back. Quotient of 9 and t, quotient is division. So there we go, 9 and t. Um, what if I did it like this? Totally cool, but this way it's kind of the big kid way to do it. The difference of a number x and 1 half. What does difference mean? You got it, subtract them. Now if it says difference, you just get to go in the order that it says. The sum of m and 7 and 1 tenth, so sum is a plus, 5 less than the product of 4 and x. Because it's 5 less than, we've got that, the product of 4 and x goes first because products take precedence um, over this unless there's some indicator that you need a parenthesis. Let's see, is the expression algebraic or numerical. So think back to last year. What makes it algebraic? Yeah, it's got some kind of variable. So which one of these has a variable? Got it. So this one is algebraic and this one numerical. All right, we're closing in on done. These ones, hmm, what do you think we have to do? There's no directions. So I'm thinking you need to put it into words. So again, stop and take the amount of time you need to to put those into words and then come back. This one, I'm going to say the sum of x and 8.1. Could you say x plus 8.1? Yes, pretty elementary way of saying it, but you could do that. Um, you could say 8.1 more than x. There are several ways you can do it. This one, I would say 9 more than the product of 10 and x. Could I say 10 times x plus 9? Yes, again, kind of the elementary way to say it. I like the 9 more than the product of 10 and x, but they're both correct. This one, I would say the quotient of n and 3. I could say n divided by 3. Um, I could say n cut into 3 pieces. Quotient is a good mathematical word, so that's what I'm going to go for. This one. I'm going to do one less than the product of 5 and x. That's where I'm going to go with that. Could I do 5 times x minus 1? Yes. But again, we're just trying to think further and, and deepening our knowledge, and this is really what you would, what you would hear or what you would see if you were doing some translating. All right, we're coming a little bit more. I might go a little bit long on this first one, but usually I'll be shorter. So read through the problem. You go figure out what are we going to do with it, and then come back. 
table below shows how the height above the floor of the house of cards depends on the number of levels. Well, that makes sense. What is a rule for the height? Give the rule in words. Well, let's see what happens every time. Numerical expressions for the height given several different numbers of levels. I need a rule, so I'm going to look for a pattern. Well, what's the pattern? Hey, each time it does 3.5. So 3.5 times, we'll say times n. Do I need the parentheses now? I don't really, but I can still use it. 3.5n and then add the 24 because that's how tall the table is. Let's try one more and we'll be good to go. Truck, how much is it going to take for this U-Haul? Well, I'm thinking it's 49 right off the bat. And then we're going to add, oh, they used the X. Horrible, horrible, but really. It's fine. So times 75 cents times N miles. So 49 bucks just to rent the truck and 75 cents per mile. Could the 49 go to the end? You bet it could. That would be great. So that's the end of your notes for right now. Um, I want you to go, there is a link and this will help me to know that you watched the whole video and did it all. Again, you have to have all of the notes. Um, you don't have to be this detailed in a chart, but you do have to have everything written down to get the point. Now go, and there's a little quiz for you to take, and you need to have it done the night before so I can check, do you know what's going on so that I can monitor and adjust what we do in class. So hope you're having a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.